Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call of CRM Silk Mills Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amar Yardi from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Jiko. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all for the Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call of CRM Silk Mills Limited. To discuss this quarter and full year business performance, we have from the management, Mr. Ramesh Podrat, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Gaurav Poddar, Executive Director, Mr. Ashok Jalan, Executive Director, and Mr. Surendra Shetty, Chief Financial Officer. Before we proceed with this call, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. For more details, kindly refer to the investor presentation and other filings that can be found on the company's website. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the call to the management for the opening comments, and then we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. I am Ramesh Kodar. Good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to the earning conference call of CRM Business Limited to discuss Q4 and FY23 financial performance. I would like to extend my gratitude to everybody who have taken time to attend our earning conference call and have constantly been part of the journey of CRM. Also, I am pleased to welcome everyone who is looking at our company for the first time. Established in 1978, through our fabric and garment business, CRM has carved a niche in the hearts and minds of millions. We deeply understand men's clothing needs and on the cutting edge of innovation and technology to make their dream a reality. Our legacy is the foundation on which our future is being built. With a diverse range of natural, man-made and blended fabrics, we have garnered expertise in every facet of the production processes. Our production, our products are now available in every nook and corner of India. Our mission is to be the preferred partner to every stakeholder in the textile and fashion industry by delivering high quality fabrics, implementing design driven innovation, building trust, creating unsurpassed value, and delighting customers time and again. One of the key highlights of the company's performance since listing has been the cons consistent in payment of dividends. We take pride in our commitment to creating value for our shareholders and sharing the company's success through regular dividend payments. We are pleased to report that the board of directors have recommended a final dividend of rupees 4 per share of face value of 2 each. The aggregate dividend of the year is rupees 11, that is 50% per equity share. Our ability to pay dividends consistently is a result of our focus on maintaining a strong financial position, effective capital allocation, and prudent financial management practices. We strive to strike a balance between reinventing in the growth of our business and rewarding our shareholders for their trust and support. I now hand over the call to Mr. Gaurav Kodar to discuss the business in detail. Thank you. Thank you, Rameji, and good afternoon to everyone. Our company went public in 1980, and since then, we have expanded our manufacturing, which now includes weaving, knitting, processing, garmenting, and indigo rope dyeing facilities in Tarapur, Silvasa, Daman, and Amravati. Over the years, we have focused on excelling our capabilities in manufacturing with an in-house research and development team to cater to the needs of the clothing market in India. We have consistently aimed to meet the changing needs and preferences of our customers while maintaining the highest standards of quality. Since 1991, 
our company underwent the next phase of growth where we introduced and strengthened our brands. Coming home to CRM is a well-known tagline in all Indian households today. Currently, CRM offers a broad range of fabrics under multiple sub-brands. We launched Oxenberg, a brand dedicated to ready-made garments with a wide portfolio of formals and casuals in shirts, trousers, and denim. We also launched J. Hampstead, offering a premium worsted suiting and cotton and linen shirting fabrics, which was later also extended to garments. We further extended the CRM's brand to offer casual and formal apparel, catering to the evolving preferences of our customers under the brand name CRM's Mozo and Inspiro. The launch of these brands allowed us to tap into a broader customer base. The period from 2013 to 2020 was marked by several achievements. In 2013, CRAMS was recognized as the most trusted brand by Economic Times and Nielsen Media Research, a testament to our commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. In 2015, we acquired the Italian brand Cadini, adding a touch of European elegance to our portfolio by offering premium fabrics in suitings and shirtings. In 2020, we achieved a significant milestone by setting a Guinness World Record for hosting the largest online textile mahakum for retail management, showcasing our industry leadership. In the last two years post-COVID, we have clearly focused on innovation and expansion in the product portfolio that cater to the new age requirements of aspirational Indians. We introduced Denknit, a knitted denim fabric brand offering a unique blend of comfort and style in the denim space. We launched bamboo blended shirting fabric for the first time in India. We have also entered fabric market, considered the market opportunity is large. The launches exemplify our commitment to staying ahead of the market trends and providing our customers with a diverse range of high quality products. Before I hand over the call to Mr. Shetty to discuss the financial performance, let me discuss our strategy for the business going forward. We have adopted an asset life model to expand the business in the future. As a company, we have taken a call to leverage an optimal mix of in-house production and outsourcing. Our manufacturing will largely focus on innovation and quality to deliver exceptional products that meet the evolving needs and expectations of our customers. This approach will allow us to scale our business and respond quickly to the changing needs of, in the demand with efficient use of capital. Our store expansion will largely be done through the franchise model we believe it's a win-win proposition. Partnering with CRM pro provides a lucrative and sustainable business model, offering unmatched growth opportunities to our franchise partners. With a payback period of approximately three to four years, our franchise model enables partners to achieve profitability in a relatively short time. This approach not only helps us to increase our reach and gain market share, but also allows us to grow faster while maintaining lower debt levels and enhancing return on capital. We will focus on leveraging our brands and expanding market share. Our spends on advertising and marketing will increase in the quarters to come. This will help us strengthen our existing brands and reach new audiences. By capitalizing on the trust associated with the CRM's brand, we can foster customer loyalty and expand our market share. We recognize that the success of our consumer-centric business heavily, heavily relies on the strength and effectiveness of our distribution network. We are committed to expanding our network by improving the efficiency of existing channels and developing new partnerships and collaborations. We currently have 800 plus distributors spread across the length and breadth of the country. We have more than 225 stores with 1.75 lakh square feet foot of retail space. Through these channels, we sell 100 plus million meters of fabric and five plus million pieces of apparel serving millions of customers and counting. Promoting tailoring in the community is an important endeavor for us. We recognize the value of tailoring in driving textile consumption. Therefore, we provide training to tailors across different geographies aiming to revive and promote tailor-made clothing. By supporting and empowering tailors, we contribute to the growth of the textile industry while offering personalized and customized solutions to our customers. Through these strategic initiatives, we aim to strengthen our position as a leading brand while catering long-term value creating long-term value for our customers, partners, and stakeholders. Coming to the performance in Q4 and FY23, we achieved significant growth in revenue by maintaining healthy EBITDA margins, 
This consistent growth reflects in the company's exceptional ability to engage with consumers through our brands, providing them with an unparalleled fashion experience. Our focused approach on achieving a balanced distribution strategy and expanding our product categories alongside strong branding initiatives and launch of new products have been key drivers behind this outstanding performance. We are thrilled with the response we have received across all product categories and we are confident that our portfolio of products and brands will continue to drive growth. Coming to the outlook in the short term, we believe that the retail sales will remain under pressure in the current quarter led by weak demand. With the festival season in the second half of the year, we are positive that the demand will start recovering. Our company will continue to remain dedicated to meeting the evolving demands of today's youth with our extensive range of fabrics and apparel. With our financial strength, strong brands, manufacturing expertise, technical capabilities, and widespread distribution, our company is committed to pursuing sustainable and profitable growth in the long run. Now I would like request our CFO, Mr. Shetty, to share highlights of our financial performance, following which we'll be happy to respond to your queries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaurav. Good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to announce the financial performance of Theorem Systems Limited. Financial 2023 performance. Revenue for financial year 23 is rupees 22,293 million, a growth of 17.1% year on year basis. This is the highest revenue in the history of the company. Fabric constitutes 77%, garment 17%, and yarn and other 6% of financial year 23 revenues. Fabric business delivered a growth of 10.6%, largely led by better product mix. Garment business delivered growth of 45.3%, led by volume growth of 20.3% and value growth of 25.1%. The sales in the last year included a large institutional export order, which comprised approximately 20% of the garment revenues. Export contributes 12.8% of our sales. The operating EBITDA for financial year 23 is rupees 3,688 million with the operating margin of 16.5% and an increase of 10.4% on year-on-year -year basis. Quarter 4 financial year 23 performance. For quarter 4 financial year 23, revenue increased by 10.6% to rupees 6,948 million on a year-on-year -year basis. Operating EBITDA for quarter 4 financial year 23 increased by 3.1% on year-on-year -year basis to rupees 1,213 million. Operating margin for quarter 4 financial year 23 dropped by 127 basis points. PAC for quarter 4 financial year 23 increased by 14.3% on a year-on-year -year basis to rupees 883 million. Net cash flow from operating activities for the financial year 23 is rupees 2,354 million, up from rupees 355 million for financial year 22. Also during the year, we have reduced the debt by rupees 619 million as against 31st March 22, taking our gross debt to be 0.17 times. The net basis, we have the net cash of which is 35 million. Thank you. That is all from my side. And we can now open for the floor for the question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
Our first question is from the line of Manish Oswal from Nirmal Bank Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my question on the your comment, one of the comment uh, regarding the demand trend in the uh, near term will be weak. Can you elaborate that comment? Uh, I mean, it has been weak in April or May, or uh, <coughs> and, uh, and any specific reason of our weakness of demand and when you expect the demand to recover? Yes, thank you, Manish, for the question. See, in the short term, we believe that uh, this retail sale is under pressure. There are wedding seasons uh, that, was, is, uh, that are in May and June. We expect the demand to revive for this wedding season. And later on in the year also, there are strong weddings for which we expect the demand to revive. So uh, there is a weakness currently, but we expect things to normalize in the, in the whole year. Secondly, uh, in, in our, uh, you said about asset light model, so our outsourced volume or value of our total sales, what is the proportion of the fabric business? So in the fabric business, I can give you in a percentage volume term. So roughly our outsourced percentage is ranging between 45 to 50%. And uh, that this kind of uh, outsourced percentage gives us a lot of flexibility in how we manage our production. And that is why uh, we and we have a strategy to follow an asset light model. So, in coming times, this will only increase. And the distribution network, you said, uh, 800 plus distributors we have. So, what is your plan to expand this distribution network from the current level to let, let's say next three years? Where do you see this number to go? So, this 800 plus distributors is across. Uh, our fabrics and garments and within the fabrics and garments we have several brands and then several sub brands and for each uh, category we try to create a different network so that we can more effectively reach the market and uh, so it's not this easy to give a, a concrete number as such but we keep reviewing and it's a constant process to see uh, which areas are vacant how, how each distributor is performing if we see that there is a scope for further capital that can be invested in that market or a, a market that we feel can be penetrated further, then we review and add distributors accordingly. And last one data point, uh, the tier two and tier three city sales as a percentage of total sales for the year FI23. And the net debt figure you talked about 25 million, but in a presentation it is net debt of 20 crores uh, given. So they, I was confused with the number. That's up to just one second. Mr. Shetty will answer this question. Yeah. See, our the debt is level is 149 crore. Now investments we are having around 166 crore. So net debt is around 40 crores. So 20.8 crore. That is slide number 23, right, sir? Yes, 20 crores is the net debt at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And uh, tier two and tier three city sales number for uh, of the total sales for the year, sir. So it's difficult to give an exact number because our model is through a distribution channel and then goes to retail. But largely the sale is more tier two, three, and four. Uh, that is the model that we operate in. I mean, uh, broadly, I'm not asking specific number. It, it should be seventy percent something of what kind of the broad number? Yes, I think that would be fair estimate, maybe higher. Because two, three, and four, our market is more rural India, so it could be even higher. Okay, okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nandish from Money Control Research. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I wanted to learn, know about any strategy regarding this China plus one, if we have any. Thank you, Nandish, for the question. So we are, uh, some manufacturing that we have in-house is for our flexible kind of production for value-added products. The rest of the production that we are doing is, uh, with, uh, is focused within India, and it is uh, largely outsourced within India with our partners. So uh, when we are in the branded segment, where we, we are selling a value-added branded product to, through the distribution channel, the China plus one strategy as such is more relevant for the export market, and we are largely in the branded distribution India business. 
Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vishal Prasad from VP Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, so we used to do 60 to 70 crore of, uh, I mean, we used to have 60 to 70 crore of marketing budget and we have reduced it to 20 crore per year. Could you share the rationale behind the decision and what impact do you see due to reduction in our marketing budget? I'm sorry, are you talking about the uh, variation in the marketing spend? Right, I mean, we used to spend 60 to 70 crores on advertisement and other things. So and now we have less before. See, our company is a branded company and we have to spend and invest on our brand to be relevant in the market today and reach new audiences continuously. Before COVID, uh, we used to spend about close to 4% uh, in advertisements and sales promotion marketing. Uh, because of COVID and the need to conserve cash and be prudent, we reduced that spend to about 2% last year. But in the coming year, we uh, feel the need to go back to that 4-5% kind of spend where we need to strengthen our brand and we feel that that is the need of the hour. Right, that answers my question. Uh, so uh, we have moved to uh, the final sale mode. Uh, earlier, we used to give uh, our products on credit. So, so what has changed for our distributors and stockists? How do they deal with the inventory risk of slow-moving stock? Do we organize the expo where the customers come and choose uh, and place the order, or how is it? So, so the distribution business still, uh, there is credit in the business, but that is very limited due to the strength of the brand. Uh, to sell the product, of course, we keep uh, organizing conferences and displays for our distributors and retailers where that is a, a constant process before every season so that they can interact with the company, select the products, give their feedback, and plan for future merchandise. So it is a constant and a very involved process between the channels. So from our customer's perspective, right, distributors, distributors and stockers, so how do you, they deal with the inventory risk of slow moving stock? Earlier they used to return it to us. Now, what do they do it with now? There is still a small percentage of return, but largely the inventory is uh, moved on to the channel ahead. So whatever is left, there is a small percentage of return. Overall, 4 to 5 percent is the return in the overall business, and uh, it's much lesser in the fabrics, more in the garment. In the garment business, the return, whatever we get, we have our factory outlets to, through which we liquidate, because in the fashion business, there is always going to be a, a, a percentage which is not sold. So that is how we deal with it. And garments, they, they are able to sell it once uh, uh, they receive it. Earlier, they used to return the garments as well, right? So if the distributor has yeah. Yeah. return of garments, we, uh, we we sell it to our factory outlets, which is sold uh, through them. Okay. And uh, going forward, uh, since we are planning to increase our uh, uh, marketing budget, what kind of volume growth do we see uh, in the next two, three years? You're talking about sales growth, sorry? Our, our volume growth or sales growth, or where do you see our revenue to be in the next two, three years? So we, we aspire to consistently grow at around between 12 to 15 percent year on year. Okay. Sir, what's our maintenance capex? Maintenance capex is roughly around 30 crores, 30 to 40 crores, around about that. The last two, two years we have spent 131 crore on capex. So what was that for? Uh, I think 60 to 90 crore would be maintenance and rest. See, the rest of this, in the last few years we have developed ego rope dyeing uh, facility and extended that to knitting. So this was an opportunity that we saw a new market to be created in India and uh, we believe in this indigo knitted fabric as a product in India. So that is where this capacity was expanded. But in okay, future, sir. this year, there is no uh, only maintenance capex. So sir, what's the sale for J. Hampstead and Kedini for FY23? The largest, uh, uh, there are multiple brands and sub-brands in the fabric business. And uh, overall, the largest brand uh, is Sierra's. So J. Hampton and Kalini still is more premium and relatively newer. So uh, the largest share comes from Sierra's. Would it be possible for you to share the numbers? Unfortunately, we cannot share uh, brand-wise numbers. But uh, the largest share is Sierra, and the other two brands are following this. The last question, who is a typical customer in Tier 2 to Tier 2 four towns? I think that in the tier two and uh, the towns below that, tailoring is still a very attractive uh, proposition for the customer. So all uh, 
25, 30 and above are our customers and, and there is a large uh, demand for this product is, uh, in that market. Uh, earlier when, we, when um, we, we were children, I remember CRM being used by people who used to be 35 or 40 plus. So has that changed or is still it is the same? Yes, see, it's very difficult to estimate, but from from our perspective, we are trying to create aspiration in our brands. And other than that, we're trying to create new products uh, in the fabric space as well as in the garment space. The CRM's brand has been, has been expanded to the garment sector also to uh, to uh, approach this, this new millennial customer. So our efforts are there to uh, approach a large base of customers throughout the country. And whom do you consider as our competitors, sir? I think it's very difficult to take names. Every company has their own positioning and trying to do their own thing. We uh, believe in this India story and we believe that our brands and our segment and our innovation can lead to good results for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Nisar Guvakaria from NV Alpha Fund Management LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm looking at your uh, company for the first time. Uh, you mentioned, sir, that the advertising expense will go up next year. You know, uh, two years, FI 22 and 23, we have done 17 and a half, 18 percent margins, which we have not done historically. Are these margins uh, sustainable uh, when you ramp up your advertising as to the normal number that was in FI 19? That's my first question. Thank you, Nisar, for your interest. Uh, of course, we are going to spend, uh, as we mentioned, uh, more this year in advertising, marketing, and sales promotion. And we have not done that in the last couple of years, as you rightly pointed out. And this, of course, will a bit uh, impact the EBITDA to that extent. However, we feel that uh, this investment is necessary and a brand uh, which will only help in going, growth going forward. But other than that, we would like to maintain the EBITDA levels out, apart from this exp uh, expense in, increased expense in advertising. Okay. Secondly, sir, if I look at your business over the last four or five years, you've done a fantastic job in terms of rationalizing, uh, you know, your expenses in employees, uh, your balance sheet deleveraging. Uh, however, you know, the if you look at the top line growth CAGR, uh, it's for eight, ten years, it's like eight uh, percent. So, are there any reasons why this top line growth is, uh, you know, subpar as compared to what India grows as a market? And is that structurally going to change uh, in the near future? Is there some uh, benefit that we're getting from unorganized players going away? Is there some benefit that we're getting from some Chinese uh, fabrics coming into the country, which is now not coming? You know, just your thoughts on that. <coughs> yes, thank you. See, uh, if you look at earlier COVID, then the, if you look at the trajectory earlier COVID, there will be a different picture. And if you look at uh, the, uh, the results after COVID, then there's a different picture there because of the uh, things that you pointed out of rationalizing and you know working on the balance sheet and, and moving forward and going ahead we we aspire to as i mentioned grow at between 12 to 15 percent of sales growth so that is something that we are uh, keen and looking forward to and we think that this is the kind of expectation that we should have okay and sir i heard if i heard it right uh, someone mentioned that there is a, a one-off export opportunity that was there in the garmenting business in this year right right so is that a one-off or is that a base on which the garmenting business can grow at 15-20% uh, above that base also? And how large was that uh, export order? As mentioned earlier, that export order was about 20% of the garment turnover. Right. And, uh, the reason uh, this order basically there was a pent-up demand in the uniform segment all across globally. And we had this opportunity of an export order, uh, which was a significantly large order. But uh, it's not that... This and it's not that it is going to repeat at this volume because of the pent-up nature of demand. And we continue to look for opportunities and profitable orders that we get so uh, get in the future. So uh, we will we will continue to grow our garment business, but this high growth was due to this one order. Okay. Thank you so much for answering my question and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Keshav Gar from Counter. Cyclical PMS, please go ahead. 
sir i'm trying to understand that our operating margins have increased in the uh, post covid so so now you mentioned that uh, we will increase uh, basically double our uh, i mean budget year on year so so should we expect the uh, operating margins to reduce by 200 basis points in fr24 year on year i'm sorry can you please repeat that question so so due to us doubling our advertisement budget to from 2% to 4% of revenues so should we expect a decrease in operating margins by 200 basis points for fr24 see it is our endeavor to uh, maintain ebitda margins we understand that this year there will be a higher advertisement and marketing spend and to that extent it will be affected however we strive to you know deliver the best kind of value so sir so also sir are we planning to take any price increase across our portfolio and sir what was the last last price increase we took and what are the plans for the future as well as what is the movement in the raw material prices so uh, in the last couple of years raw material has been really volatile and uh, based on that we have been uh, taking uh, taking price increases as required so there are see in our business it's a fashion business there are new products and when there is a new product automatically there is a new price but in regular products then there is a price increase that happens based on uh, you know how the market moves and how we perceive the future movement to be so that is a very regular process uh, which is not uh, it's not fixed that it is done weekly or monthly or anything like that uh, so there are too many moving parts to give a uh, exact answer but uh, now the raw material price looks uh, in a kind of a stable environment and hopefully this year it will remain stable so sir and uh, sir like we mentioned that 12-15% revenue growth so, so starting fy24 can we expect such kind of revenue growth year on year it is our aspiration in the next 3 years to do this kind of number right sir and so lastly just one thing sir since uh, so 77% of our revenue is coming from fa- fabric sales and this percentage has actually increased in the past few years from around 73 74% so so uh, going forward sir i mean in the next 10 years sir uh, do you see this trend of uh, ready made garments taking over more and more from tailored garments uh, more so in rural and tier 2 tier 3 uh, cities see the fabric uh, business has a very large base as compared to the garment business so uh, we are not looking at Uh, the percentage contribution of which business to the overall sale we are looking at how we can expand these bin- businesses individually they have their separate distribution channels so they are we are looking at them independently you are not looking at you know how much one can what will be the percentage of one business for the turn- for the overall turnover sir what i am trying to say that sir garment revenue ready made garment sales are increasing at a far higher rate than fabric sales so so obviously market is shifting from tailored uh, fabric to ready made garments so and if you see uh, the ready made garment players they are approximately today 50% higher uh, in terms of revenue than pre covid whereas we are uh, more or less like let's say 10 15% higher than uh, pre covid so so uh, so do you think that this trend is going to accelerate going forward and ready made garments are uh, going to increase at the cost of our fabric sales Yeah, I agree with your overall thesis, but the fabric market still is a very largely unorganized. So there is a lot of scope for the branded players to make a large impact in that segment. Uh, base in the fabric business is also very large. The garment business overall is a much larger market, and it is much much more unorganized. So that market is also growing strongly, and our base in that market is is uh, much smaller. We have a much uh, more dominant mark, uh, leader, leadership kind of position, market share, higher market share in the fabric business. and we also have a strong brand and we have been in the fabric market for the last 3 or 4 decades so uh, i mean we see growth in both areas and we don't want to look at it how each what the percentage contribution is to the revenue okay so thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to one or two per participant should you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the queue
Our next question is from the line of Nirav Savai from Abacus AMC. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. So my question is, uh, apart from these two businesses, which is branded fabric and branded apparels, uh, are there any new emerging businesses where the size of the opportunity is big and uh, we are still looking at it and maybe it's a smaller size but can eventually be a key growth driver for the company? Thank you, Neera. See, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the largest businesses is the branded uh, fabrics and garments for us and that itself is growing. Other than that, we have a yarn business which is relatively new and we believe that that is also a strong category going forward because that is in the B2B segment. We have uh, launched a new product, which is Indigo Knits uh, for top and bottom wear, which is a, a, a new market, but it is we feel that the knitted fabric will uh, be a strong market going forward in the, in the denim segment. And apart from this, you know, in this uh, franchisee-owned, franchisee-operated stores, uh, we have about 125 stores. So any broad target where we can see this in the next three to five years? Because we would have a limited competition in tier three, tier four in our price range kind of products. Uh, so any kind of a target which you can, you know, first, if you have internally decided something, what can be the kind of size of this retail business in the next three to five years? Right, so we have about 225 stores now, and we expect to open about 50 stores, close to 50 stores in this year, and we aspire to, you know, maintain this kind of speed in the coming years also. Right, yes. No, it's a bit from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Surya Narayan from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just to understand the yarn uh, business where we entered into, that is the Indigo Knit. So what was the opportunity we looked at because uh, the individual companies uh, in the, uh, in the uh, you know, denim business, they are having their in-house, uh, you know, knitting capacity. So what exactly we want to uh, create a differentiation? That is the question number one. Thank you, Surya, for your question. So the, the, the denim business, as you mentioned, uh, there is a large capacity already available, also very large. Hello? Yes, there is some disturbance. Surya Narayan, may we request you to mute your line from your side? Yeah. Thank you. So the denim business is a large market. And uh, uh, like you said, there is a lot of capacity available, but that capacity largely is in the woven segment. So denim bottom weight traditionally and what we see in India now is largely a woven market. So it is woven with the indigo yarn. What we are, uh, the capacity that we have set up is uh, knitted fabric, which is indigo dyed. So that knitted fabric is a completely new market and uh, that gives additional comfort and flexibility to the user. We feel the market will shift from uh, woven to knitted, and that is why this investment was made. So how much investment has gone into that, sir? Mr. Shetty, uh, can you please? 120 crores we invested. 120 crores. And how, what kind of revenue we have generated uh, so far uh, last year? Last year, approximately, Five six percent of our overall turnover was uh, through this, and the business is very new, and we are still setting up this opportunity because the market is a new market, and we are trying to create this market. We have got good response so far, but it is a it, it takes some time to convert into. Is it related to top wear or bottom wear? So the, we are selling indigo knit fabrics. So if we we make lighter weight fabrics, it can go in top wear, and heavier weight can go in bottom wear. So it's agnostic to top and bottom, agnostic to male, female kids. So it can be used as an indigo product. Okay. And to, sir, to get your color of uh, your business, I mean, in the fabric, how? Uh, what is the B2B component and B2C component? So the largest part of the business is the branded business. So B2C is uh, much, much higher. It is more than three-fourths of the business. B2B will be how much? It is it is very uh, it is smaller. The larger largest share comes from the B2C segment where we are selling our brands through a, a channel. 
okay and the garment side uh, you know uh, to understand uh, how much is uh, related to i mean if you let's say categorize into formal wear uh, and casual wear and uh, let's say fashion wear uh, then uh, what would be the formal wear uh, which is including your uniform business uh very difficult to uh, you know categorize it like that we are in the branded business to distribution and as the market whatever the market demands we are able to you know add that kind of product we are available in all the segments and uh, so formal and casuals both are something that we are looking forward to okay i mean just to want to understand whether your uniform business which is primarily i believe uh, a kind of a regular business so whether that is uh, coming from the school uniforms or it is kind of a military uniform yeah. or industrial uniform so we have a school uniform business in the fabric and garment in, in the sector and largely that is school and corporate uniforms but that is a small percentage and that too is somewhere influenced by the brand but largely the business is uh, branded business for consumers which is going through retail or channel okay so and uh, because you know just now you have you have just no concord to somebody is you know view that no you don't look at uh, you know changing in the paradigm shift uh, that is happening uh, as uh, more fabric is uh, turned into the garments and people are more interested for garments because of uh, efficiency in the prices because you know the production processes because you know the ready made uh, tailoring is very costlier than the mass uh, you know uh, uh, mass made for uh, you know garments if that is the case then why we are not uh, you know, changing our step attitude towards the business or approach to the business all our businesses that we are in are important to us uh, the garment business is growing and the garment market as you rightly pointed out is also growing Uh, but the fabric market is very unorganized it still has a large percentage of unorganized and and that is a market share that is available to all the branded players to you know grab uh, and regarding to tailoring uh, we feel that in the tier 2 3 and even lower than that uh, tailoring is still uh, very effective and cost effective as well as people are also prefer to uh, you know get customized solutions for their product in, in the in the wedding seasons and in other uh, other times for their needs so this perception of uh, higher tailoring is true for the metros but in the interior of india it is it is it is still there is a lot of time for that to happen sorry to interrupt mr surya narayan may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn thank you our next question is from the line of ashka trivedi from kdi securities private limited please go ahead Uh, hello sir am i audible hello yes we can please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity so sir i had a question on uh, uh, what would be our average realization per unit in the premium fabric category so uh, it's very difficult to define between uh, premium and mass and uh, because you know the market is uh, depending on how the market moves we make that kind of product so and the business also includes suiting and shirting so it's it's not a correct benchmark to look at uh, an average realization number because it is a mix of different fabrics different blends and between top wear and bottom wear so i think that average value is not a benchmark that we should uh, look at okay and so i was looking at the presentation and the uh, volume growth in the fabric segment is the negative 0.7% from fy22 to fy23 so can you just help me understand this number the volume growth is largely flat it is a small amount here, value here and there so it is a largely flat volume growth the growth has been led by uh, value which is uh, related to premiumization as well as inflation right And sir, uh, at the year end, our inventory levels are somewhere at 422 crores. So, can you give me a bifurcation between uh, what would be the raw material percentage and the finished goods percentage in the inventory? Again, that is not a, a parameter that we should look at because in the seasonality of the business, there is always going to be uh, sometimes there will be more finished goods, sometimes there will be more work in process, and sometimes raw material. Uh, since we are uh, largely focused on outsource. Uh, we are able to you know be flexible and based on the planning 
uh, adjust accordingly. So we should look at the total um, inventory rather than uh, break up between these three. Okay. And sir, one last question would be on the franchise. So we have stated that there is a loyalty program with 2.17 lakh members. So what is this program basically? Basically, this is a program where we collect numbers of this uh, uh, of these customers, and then we interact with them regularly for uh, you know new products or uh, some kind of uh, you know for their for their uh, birthdays or other such things where we can be in touch with them and uh, you know get creative. These are basically the customers, right? These members are basically the customers. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. And uh, the payback period, which is stated in the franchise uh, uh, franchise model, is three years. So, also uh, payback in what terms? Like the investment is from our side or from the uh, person who is uh, who has approached us for the uh, taking up the franchise? The franchisee has to invest in the uh, in the store in terms of building it as well as the merchandise that he buys. And against that, his payback is is between three to four years. Okay. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Tarun Rati from Suman. Please go ahead. Yeah, good. Uh, good afternoon, sir, uh, and congratulations for a wonderful set of numbers. Uh, could you please throw some light on the ethnic wear fabric business? Are we catering to B2B or are we catering to B2C? Yes, thank you, Tarun. So uh, in the last year, we uh, this ethnic wear as a segment is growing in in the country, and uh, we started this. Brand by under the name of CRM, so it is a sub brand under CRM. It is a branded fabric business where we reach the retailer uh, through a channel uh, and we sell branded fabric uh, to the final consumer. We are not into B2B like to Vedans and Raymond's. So that would be more of a B2B driven business where they would use their brand and we would just be a supplier of fabric. We are in the uh, consumer business where we are, where our fabric would be available at a retail store, and the consumer can buy the CRM branded fabric and get it stitched. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prerna Jundunwala from Elara Securities. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, just wanted to understand your revenue mix going forward in the next three to five years. Um, will it be uh, fabric driven only, or we can uh, we can see the share of garment and indigo uh, knit yarn and fabric improving materially, given the opportunity size is very huge. Thank you, Prerna. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's not uh, accurate to look at percentage mix of the segment. We, of course, the garment, the base is smaller, so the growth might be larger. The yarn business is a new business, so there also the growth might be larger. But the fabric business itself also, there will be growth because of the uh, or unorganized segment that is still existent. Can we uh, see this uh, garment and uh, indigo knit yarn share improving to 30, 40 percent uh, going forward? Not immediately. But uh, maybe you know five years down the line or something. I mean, just trying to understand the vision uh, towards which you are working on these two segments. I think uh, what five years down the line is too far out. We are looking at a consistent growth between 12 to 15 percent, as I mentioned. And as I mentioned, these two segments will grow relatively larger, but the base is small. So how much percentage impact it has on the overall contribution is something that we have to see. Okay. And uh, how is the profitability in the Indigo Knit Yarn business? As you've entered the business, you would have just thought about it at, at uh, the higher scale, what kind of margins this business can do? So this is a, a still a very new business. And uh, this knitting, we feel that is a, a something revolutionary for the denim industry. And uh, right now we are focused more on how we can you know utilize the capacity and create this market. So definitely there will be margins because this is a, a category that is not easily available in India. Uh, so okay. What that. is the utilization level currently? At the moment we are at about 50 to 60 percent, and we hope to increase that in this year. Okay. Last question from my end. In one of your slides, you have mentioned tailoring services uh, as well in your franchisee model. So uh, are you looking at something? 
like a premium tailoring services provided for uh, uh, you know high end uh, uh, fashion content or is it a normal tailoring uh, service uh, which you generally find in any of the neighborhood stores uh, to provide tailoring service tailoring is a very customized business and it is very important that uh, for, to increase the fabric sale and fabric business tailoring we feel is a must and for every franchisee we we uh, we tie them up with some kind of a tailor there who is locally available try to make him when once there is a certain volume then he tries to make him dedicated to the shop and we give him higher training and material so that the quality is of a particular standard okay understood thank you and all the best thank you our next question is from the line of shri j from swan investments please go ahead hi are you able to hear me yes we can uh so sir till the last quarter i think uh, we were giving out volumes in our fabric garment and yarn business so i think quarter we not given it uh, so could you just help me with the volumes for each of the segment for uh, quarter four as well as the full year Just a second. Yes, thank you, thank you, Shweta. As I mentioned earlier, we have uh, more than hundred million meters of fabric and five million pieces of apparel. and uh, further than that we cannot give any more breakup okay and any color on the realization uh, in each segment i'm sorry realizations in each of the segments uh, i think that also that data also used to share earlier realization see again i said that, that is not a benchmark because the uh, realization will be a mix of very different kind of price points and different kind of blends of shirting and suiting shirts and bottom wear so i think that is not a, a benchmark that we should no no i agree sir but just to understand fabric garment and yarn business specifically i, mean, I don't want suiting shirting i just want the whole segment uh, as a whole we have given the kind of estimated volume that we have done so i think this number can be calculated based on the thing okay uh, my second question is sir you spoke about the capex uh, last 2 to 3 years of capex you, you said uh, you spent on the indigo uh, dyeing uh, bit uh, but when i look at your presentation it uh, mentions that the indigo dyeing was done in about 2013 to 2020 so a large part of the capex i think could have happened in in those years So, what is this capex that we've done in the last two years, three years? So, the 2013 to 2020 in the presentation was just an indication of that time frame. The actual investment was done in the last couple of years. We started with indigo dyeing first, and then we added the knitting and processing capacities. Okay, and so when I look at the capex for 16, 17, and 18, that was about 75, 85, and 145. So, what was that on? That was more more on the garment side only, is it? that was a mix of uh, our existing capacities and upgradation of our process houses okay and so just last question on the garment side uh, so when we look at a uh, similar player in your business so he was saying about uh, 2 to 4% is what the industry is growing at now both of you guys are guiding for about 10 12 or percent growth in this business so what is it that is happening uh, is it that you guys are taking market share uh, or uh, what what is what is really happening in the industry i cannot comment on anything else i can comment on our business we feel that our brands are uh, we have strong brands we have a good focus team and a strong distribution network so we believe in that and we look forward to this kind of number which i mentioned to you okay thank you thank you our next question is from the line of naitik mohata from sequent investments please go ahead Howdy. uh thank you for the opportunity sir most of my questions have been answered so 
just on the data point, uh, the advertising and marketing expense for financial year 23. So what would the absolute number be like? Uh, it was about 2%, so I think that can be calculated. Okay. And so secondly, to add on the concerns of my previous participants as well. So the advertisement expense that they are planning to increase from 2% to 4% going forward. So uh, how badly could that impact on our margins? Like, uh, are we targeting some margins, uh, some percentage margins uh, in FY24? Or uh, uh, we are confident we, despite we will increase the absolute value of uh, advertising expense, but the overall impact on our uh, margins would not be that much because our sales would grow hand in hand as well. So all of that will play out. As you are rightly mentioning, we would we aspire to maintain similar EBITDA margins, but of course this advertisement increase will have an impact on that, and uh, that we will uh, you know see how it comes, but. Our in endeavor is to spend about 4 to 5 percent because we feel that to strengthen the brand is the most important thing we need to do now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that's helpful. Thank you. Due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gaurav Odar for closing comments. I would like to thank everyone for taking time out to attend the call. I hope we have been able to respond to your queries adequately. If you have any further queries, please feel free to reach out to us or Orient Capital, our IR partners. Have a great week ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of CRM Silk Mills Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.